Welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. We're continuing the Aspect series. You've got Mimi here. We got Sierra there over Hello. in Paris. <laughs> I am. <laughs> in case you're new here, there's your Coming there's her to location. You from Paris and New York. We sound so legit if wow. we say that. <laughs> wow. I mean, is it fashion week? I don't know. Anywho. <laughs> Wow, discombobulated. But we're going to talk about the sun and the moon in aspect to each other. So if you're new here and you just kind of searched because you have your sun and moon in an aspect to each other, either in your natal chart or in a relationship or it's happening to you right now by transit, um, this is a series where we're talking about specific planets and how they relate to each other through the five most common aspects. And today I'm really excited because the sun and moon are such major, they're like the luminaries. They're such major planets in our personal makeup. Yes, I am really excited about this. And we have another episode out with Mars and Venus that you might have also listened to. And, you know, I just want to like kind of say again for this episode that I, I find myself looking into these aspects so often when I'm looking at my own chart, when I'm looking at my chart and related to in relation to somebody else, or, you know, when there is a transit happening. And it's really fun to kind of hone in on just two specific planets. And in this case, yes, mm-hmm. the luminaries, which, gosh, what a good word, luminaries. Oh, with the sun also and the moon. a good baby name. Oh, oh. <laughs> Literally, literary. literally before this, we were discussing, we're like, could Gibbous be a great baby name? Oh, like Gibbous is Gibbous? a cute name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. Come here, little Gibby. Like oh. it's a dog. Anyway, I'm not a parent if that's not <laughs> obvious. <laughs> we we are starting this one off slightly unhinged and I'm here I for know. It. I'm sorry. It's because I introed. I don't usually intro. <laughs> But now anyway, everybody knows that before I'm in Paris. We Thank get you. Into it. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> before we get into it, um, make sure that you go follow us on Instagram at the Stars Made Me Podcast. You can also follow Sierra at magical.bookclub or me at harveymountain.alchemy and at mimes.me. Um, we also have a Patreon where we have a second podcast. We have a Discord community. You get early access to all of these public episodes. Um, and there's a free trial. So you can go find that at patreon.com slash the stars made me do it yeah and with these specific transit episodes sorry yeah with these specific aspect episodes when we are chatting with our patrons in discord because this episode does always come out a couple days early over there you know our patrons are like messaging in discord oh i have this aspect in my chart and then oh wait me too and we're all connecting or oh i had this one or that reminds me of my you know parent friend you know whatever and there's a lot of putting kind of the tangible real life oh i listened to the episode and hey i'm coming in with commentary on it how it really shows up yeah so if that is something that you're interested in that's something that we're just doing on the regular over there on discord through patreon so definitely check it out and without further ado let's dive into the sun and the moon yeah so i mean i wrote out just like a little bit of what the sun represents versus what the moon represents like in direct contrast to each other so where the sun represents our sense of creativity the moon is more our nurtured self um the sun is about self-expression whereas the moon is more of an emotional capacity how much we're able to hold on an emotional level the sun is the divine masculine the moon is the divine feminine uh the sun is also our willpower it's our drive it's what motivates us in a different way from from mars which also is what drives us the sun is more the story arc of your life it's like how we evolve through the themes of the sign that our sun is in throughout our entire life. Whereas the moon is how we store emotion and it's our emotional habits and cycles and um, connection to our core self. So it's a much more intimate relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the sun is very brightly lit. It's like a spotlight, whereas the moon is very hidden in the dark. So it's kind of like the very top of your chart, midheaven versus the nadir, which is the very bottom of your chart. There's such a, a very seen energy with the sun because it is the ruler of Leo, which is the spotlight energy. It is the main character. Whereas the moon, which is the ruler of cancer, is much more sheltered and protected and, and pr- yeah, self-protecting. Yeah. Like I... I feel like, you know, 
go back and listen to our top three episode if you haven't yet, because we really talk about how in a person's chart, the top three that we talk about being your sun, moon, and rising sign, and go into details on those three parts of your personality and how mm-hmm. they're really the first three things that we oh, look I at. When we about get into that episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we get <laughs> into astrology, we really look into our top three. And just a quick reminder, overview of that is the first thing that somebody meets is your rising. Then they get to know your sun and then if they're lucky they get to know your moon and so when Mm -hmm. we're talking about this sun versus moon this is kind of like step two and three of the you know getting to know somebody if we take away that rising it's you know the sun being that main character energy I love that you you know refer to it as that story arc and then the moon I always think of you know who we are when we are alone when we are our most comfortable selves and when we're with our closest people because it really does feel like that inner version of us it's not the you know external energy that we're putting out there it's that when we're getting to retreat and have that internal energy just kind of feeling safe and that's Mm -hmm. really going to be very interesting as we go over the different aspects in this because some people might have opposite sun and moon some people might have that you know kind of conflicting energy with their sun and moon and some people might have the same and so that is just it's Anyways, I recommend going back and listening to our top three episode. And before we, I guess, continue going on with the sun and moon in general, have a listen to our inner planets and outer planets episodes. If you'd like more information, you know, want to get a little bit more info on the sun and the moon and all the other planets. And also we have an aspects episode, which will, you know, refresh a little bit here, but that'll really give you uh, more details on what the aspects actually are. Hell yeah. We have such a good, like well of information when it comes to the basics of astrology and like trying if you want to dive into something in astrology that you've been hearing about but don't know we've got an episode for it at this point love that that. it's been a lot of work and (laughs) and if we don't reach out let us know if there's something we're missing because we'll we'll smack that I don't know. I won't. We'll I don't know what the that. end of that sentence will... is. <laughs> We're going to smack that. Akon. <laughs> please, please let us know if you'd like us to smack a particular astrology talk. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I'll intro from now on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. It really, it really messed with the mojo of the episode of the podcast. <laughs> Anyway, the oh. last thing that I have written here for the sun versus moon, and these are very like, these are more archaic looks at the sun and moon is the sun is more a relationship to dad and moon is relationship to mom. But I think that that's kind of related to very strict gender roles of dad is the authoritarian and he's the one who has the fire and brings, you know, brings life whereas the mom is like the nurturing and always the emotional one which isn't always the case so i am going to be bringing a little bit of flavor of upbringing into the aspects that we talk about moving forward but just more traditionally sun is dad moon is mom yeah and i you know as someone who grew up in a more traditional household i can totally see that in my chart how you know my my sun versus my moon and how that relates to each of those parents because I do have that traditional role but or I had those traditional roles in my life but I can also see that you know more external uh energy being the sun and that more internal nurturing energy being the moon so whichever you know parent figure in your life too or role model figure in your life kind of fit those roles yeah all right let's yeah. get into it so four aspects We are going to be going over, you know, go back and listen to that Aspects episode to get a more thorough description on everything. But the Aspects we're going to be discussing here are Conjunction, Sextal, Square, Trine, and Opposition. Those are the quote-unquote, you know, main ones that you look at. Those are the energies that we have gone over in our other Aspects episode. And they're the, the first ones that you look at. And you can find... You can find more of the minor aspects and have those be significant parts of your chart as well. But basically, when we're looking at aspects of two planets, you know, and in astrology, the sun and the moon are considered planets, you know, these are the ones that we really go over that conjunction, sextal, square, trine, and opposition. Mm -hmm. So starting off with a sun-moon conjunction, which is also known as the new moon. And let's just like 
shout out the very OG episode of you and like OG host Tara, where you did talk about the moon moon or was it actually the once in a blue moon episode where Tara wasn't there. So you talked about all the different phases of the moon. Yeah. In well, OG host Tara is a new moon baby. So that's kind of fun too, because she's Libra sun and moon. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the different, there is, there is a, a much older beginning of the stars made me do it episode that did go over the moon phases just in mm -hmm. general. And it's really cool to have that. I, I feel like there's the scientific moon phase you know when I was like mm -hmm. the fourth grade elementary teacher like teaching my students the different moon phases because that is part of science that you learn and then we have the more mystical part of the moon phases where we learn about the energies to bring what to manifest what to release what to you know how they align in your life in like a more I feel like nature based way and then we have the astrology of it which is in my opinion like a really cool blend of both of those things because yes. it is a pattern of the scientific like these these are the moon phases. This is what's happening. You know, we see the shadow of the moon in relation to the sun, mm -hmm. relation to the earth, everything, how it's all aligning. But we do have specific energies that really do, you know, I guess, show themselves through these different phases. And the new moon is when the sun and the moon are in the same spot, aka when the sun and moon are conjunct. But if you literally think about that in the sky, that is when it is they are the same sign and it is blocked out. The light is blocked out. So we have that dark, you know, dark moon. And mm -hmm. just that whole idea of the sun and the moon expressing the same sign through their different energies, but aligning in that way is very cool. Yeah. There is such a sense of this person knowing exactly who they are and getting the chance to live their story arc in alignment with how they feel they are on the inside. This is someone who I think is more self-oriented, like more focused on the self than one would originally think, regardless of what sign it's in, because there's such a secure connection to who they are, both emotionally and what they're passionate about and how they want to express themselves. And I did read somewhere that people born on a new moon kind of have Aries energy. And it makes sense for when we are experiencing a new moon as a transit, when there's a new moon in the sky, it's a time where we release the old and move forward. And it's such a progress placement where we're like, okay, what are we moving forward towards now? Um, it's very much like not feeling doubt about where we're going and that in a natal chart is so powerful because we have yeah. this like willpower the story arc connected to being so in tune with their emotional needs and this also like i know i said that they are self-centered but they also they're quite empathic or have the ability to be empathic because they're so connected to emotion so just because they are focused on themselves doesn't mean that they're automatically like a narcissist or you know whatever they're still very attuned to what other people are feeling as well because they're so emotionally connected yeah i would think that there is such an intuitive nature there too because if you think about the expression like is everybody on the same page <laughs> i feel like that's what this is too it's mm -hmm. like yes everybody's on the same page because the sun and the moon are here together we you know we don't have diff differing views that we came to a compromise on we are literally on the same page it's just that we're two different energies that are on the same page and yeah. i feel like there's a lot of potential here because it is it's the start of something yes. new there is a high school musical episode too anyways um <laughs> you know i feel like it is the start of something new it's like this manifesting energy of okay blank slate what am i calling into power now like what direction mm -hmm. am i going in like you said and so i feel like there's potential in this person in their relationships in your relationship with another person too which we'll get into in a minute if you have this like for example my moon is conjunct my mom's son you know that has a very like uh, specific meaning and energy that shows up and I'm not a new moon like my in my personal chart I don't have this but in my relationship with a close family member I have this and so you see that mm -hmm. potential that is there or that you know 
idea of being on the same page. If you are the moon person in this, like I am, and you have somebody's sun shining on your moon, then their external energy is shining a light on all of your internal emotions and that Mm -hmm. inner self. And the opposite too, if you are the sun person, you have a way of having that emotional, I guess, almost like illumination from that person, whereas you're used to just externalizing that energy and that other person because the moon reflects the light back to the sun you know and when they're on top of each other in this conjunction like this it's almost like having an awareness of because the moon is that inner depth it's that third step in that top three and I think it could show that sun person the the depths as opposed to the the heights if that makes sense Totally. I mean, I totally forgot that this is literally me and my life partner. Like Mitch's son is exactly (laughs) conjunct my moon. And the way in which that shows up very tangibly is that his son, I love these, um, this verbiage that Stephen Forrest uses in his um, Skymates volumes about which is a great resource for looking into synastry or composite charts if you're looking into relationships with astrology, but he solarizes my moon. He gives Mm. my emotional needs and my core self energy and he gives it space to be seen, right? He puts a spotlight on my emotions. So he helps me express my emotions because the planet of self-expression, his son, is right on top of my moon, my emotional needs. And so when I'm feeling emotionally charged or triggered or whatever he gives space he puts the spotlight on that moon and gives me the opportunity to express those emotions and then vice versa I lunarize his son I soften and I nurture his desire to express himself now I mean they're in Taurus so he's not a super expressive guy like he doesn't have very big mannerisms or whatever he's quite stoic but I do nurture and I try to um make it seem like a safe space for him to creatively express himself in the same way, but in in very similar ways, but quite different in that he's giving me energy. He's giving me physical fiery energy, whereas I give him soft, watery, nurturing energy. Yeah. Yes. And that's, so that's just such a beautiful example of when you are looking at two people's charts together with this sun moon conjunction and we also so we mentioned the new moon in general when the sun and the moon that is the transit happening and we are all experiencing a new moon energy I feel like so many people are familiar with new moon and full moon and we'll get to full moon Mm -hmm. but I also want to bring up the fact that every month because the moon is the fasting the fastest moving Mm quote-unquote planet you know (laughs) out there that was very mercury and sad you were like how do I make these two words go by quicker (laughs) Welcome to my life. Um, (laughs) But, you know, every month we have we experience the moon in all 12 signs and the moon is moving the quickest. So we do experience that. So even though we have once a month, we have that new moon. In addition to that, everybody experiences once a month the moon on your sun. You will Mm -hmm. have that, you know, and obviously you will also experience the sun on your moon, but that will not happen Once as year. often. Yeah, exactly. So that's just another transit to look for because it's almost like your personal new moon, even if it's not the new moon in the sky, mm, it's almost like that. a new moon for you. So once a month, everybody gets that moment of their own little personal new moon with that sun and moon conjunction. So for me, when that moon is at zero degrees Sag, right on top of my sun, it's almost like I get that little personal new moon moment. Mimi, when yours is on, I'm sorry, I don't know, the, I don't remember the degree of your sun. Oh, you don't remember my degree sun? <laughs> wow. 21. <laughs> Is it? Okay, that was my guess. That was my guess. Um, (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Can you even call yourself besties if you don't know each other's degrees? Guys, mine is easy. It's zero. Okay, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) But when, you know, Mimi has that when the moon is in 21 degrees Aries on top of her sun, that's like that kind of, you know, new moon transit. And so that's just something else that's really interesting. 
that happens. With I never transits. pay attention to that. I always pay attention to the moon, like returning to my moon, but I yes. need to pay attention to when the moon returns to my sun or when it forms a conjunction to my sun. I also wanted to point out because you said that the moon is the fastest moving planet. That means that I think that you can have kind of wider orbs with these aspects. I move my orbs up to sometimes even 10 because honestly, that's within the same day of the exact conjunction. Mm. So, you know, like think about it when we are experiencing a new or full moon, there's that lead up to it that feels just as or feels very powerful, feels like a build up to it. And then when we're stepping away from it, like when the exact moment has passed, we're still feeling the effect of that new or full moon. So if you find that you have a uh, sun and moon within 10 degrees of each other, it's very close to the energy of an exact conjunction. I will say I have this 10 degree, but it's also out of sign. So it's kind of like, mm, that's a stretch, Mimi. Like, stop, <laughs> stop trying to make your <laughs> new moon happen. It's not going to happen. It's not okay? going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I feel like this episode is risking to be chock full of millennial references again. Oh, it's very millennial. I know. Akon oh. and Mean Girls. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, so there's a lot to be said about the new moon. Yeah. And I think the last thing that I have noted down about new moon people, if this is in your natal chart, is that they're so passionate in their endeavors because the sun and the moon are both very passionate planets in different ways where the sun is passionate in extremely like a very traditional fiery, um, creative way. The moon is passionate in its emotion. So when these yeah. two are in this conjunction, they, these natives can tend to have like very high highs and low lows if they're not emotionally regulated. Yeah. Yeah, because it's affecting your inner and outer self. I think of, you know, the moon is your inner self, the sun is your mm -hmm. outer self. And when they're on top of one another, they're, any conjunction is, I mean, they're just bumping shoulders. They can't help but be affected by one another's energies. And so that yeah. inner and outer self gets hit, you know, in full force for all of the energies and emotions that it experiences. Yeah. Oh, and let's also talk about upbringing and like relationship to parents or relationship to the upbringing. This is someone who is very attached to their lineage or attached to the, their childhood and the way that their childhood made them feel. It can be both positive or negative or it could be neutral, but there is just a very strong connection from who they are now to how they were brought up, which mm. isn't the case for everybody because, you know, in other um, aspects we will talk about more secure attachment and how the upbringing isn't so much an active thought in the way that they do things now because it was secure whereas this new moon is there's very much a tie to it there can be security there but there's just very much an attachment to everything that I do now everything that I'm passionate and that I take on and decide to move forward with now has a connection to the way that I was brought up so interesting. Yeah. Ooh. Well, much to be said, I feel like with new moon and full moon energy, and we're going to get to the full moon. But before we get to the full moon, we have two more aspects to sneak in there because three have... more, baby. Oh, I meant before the full moon. But yes, and one after. You're right. Three more. So we have sun and moon in sextile to one another, which is mm -hmm. actually very cool personally because I realize I have that in my chart and mm -hmm. that's when it is 60 degrees yes yeah so when there is that 60 degree relationship between the sun and the moon and we I mean I'm speaking for myself personally but I think I'm not alone out there that most often we think of this within signs you think of okay an air sign and a fire sign because we skip one sign in between they are in sextal to one another an earth sign and a water sign because we skip one sign they're in sextal to one another but when you look at the degrees of it and that 60 degrees that's when you can determine if it is a sextile out of sign, which is yes. what I have. I have my sun in Sagittarius, but zero degrees, and my moon in Capricorn at 26 degrees. So they are within that 60 degree orb of one another. Mm -hmm. So they are technically sextile, even though they're the signs right next to each other. So again, just with all of these aspects that we're going into, kind of like Mimi tried to make her new moon happen, but it's not going <laughs> to happen. With, uh, 
<laughs> with her sun yeah. and moon there. It's just interesting to look at the degrees of it because you could have a sneaky sextile like I do. You could have one of these sneaky aspects and just something yeah. to pay attention to. But for That's called sun an out moon, of sign aspect for anyone looking for the vocabulary. Oh, thank you. Thank you for throwing in that vocab. But yeah, sun and moon sextile. What are your thoughts on, I mean, sextile is a auspicious, opportunistic aspect. Yeah, I mean, this is a really beneficial aspect for sure. And I love the word auspicious, especially in astrology terms. This is someone who I think is very secure emotionally. They have connection to, you know, what is important to them, what, um, who their core self is and what their core self needs in order to feel emotionally safe, secure, taken care of. But they also can sidestep it. There's almost like this ability to, um, separate or set aside the emotion from what they need to do as their main character, as their story arc in this life. And same, you know, vice versa, where they can set aside from their story arc and connect to their emotions. There's a real secure attachment here. And that also is something that shows up with your relationships to or relationship to your parents or your upbringing. Typically, the sun, moon, sextile, it shows a native who had a secure upbringing, had a secure and safe sense of home growing up. Yeah, I really, I relate to everything that you just said. And it's, it's so interesting to think, I like the sidestepping thing, because we think about a sextile as being in your peripheral vision. And when you turn mm -hmm. your head, you can then see one another, shake hands, make an agreement, but you also have the ability to function separately. Whereas that conjunction that we were talking about, that new moon, we're right on top of each other. We can't function separately because we're bumping shoulders, but this is more of like that handshake. We can reach out and shake hands. And yep. The whole because and it does form a stable connection then. And I feel like there is since it's an opportunity aspect, you know, we don't have to take advantage of that all the time. But if we turn our heads to shake that hand, we can take up. We can take advantage of it. I do think there's that opportunity for groundedness, for balance. And with the sun and the moon being the internal, external energies and the fact that they're flowing nicely with one another, I think that could show up as that more like creative or enthusiastic ambitious like i i can yes. my out my external self and my internal self can be in cahoots which then just expresses itself nicely yeah they have the same process when it comes to the way that they take in or spend energy i mean granted for you it's different because it is out of sign so you do have this earth and fire in communication with each other but for the most part when we're dealing with a sex soul we're dealing with earth and water in a relationship to each other which is very internal processing or we have fire and air together which is processing things outwardly so they're in this symbiotic relationship with each other, they communicate really well with each other because they process things the same. But by being in different elements, they offer up a different vocabulary. They offer up a different idea. So this is a really inspired placement. I love that you said ambitious and enthusiastic because I think enthusiasm is very much in the realm of this aspect because I think that they're very sociable. They're very popular. They're very fun. Um, these people are, are people who who know what they like and know what makes them feel good, but is also willing to step a little bit outside of their norm. Yeah. And if you think about this in a relationship, if you have your son sextal to someone's moon or, you know, vice versa, that is that idea of you guys can turn heads and shake hands <laughs> and they and be in nice communication. OK, your external self and my internal self, vice versa, you know, and in that relationship that we form together, we can be a little more like, you know, enthusiastic and expressive. And we have an opportunity for that balance and grounded energy. Voila. Yeah. 
I will say, I think one uh, difficult part of this sun sextile is maybe not even for the native because they might not recognize it within themselves, but for being in a relationship where this is a situation or being in a relationship with someone who is a sun sextile moon person is that they can be a little bit blind to adversity because they do have this very secure sense of self and secure attachment style, which unfortunately is not the norm in our world or in if you're playing a drinking game right now society patrons know what i'm talking about um (laughs) (laughs) where secure attachment is not go check us out on patreon we got inside jokes or whatever um uh, secure attachment is not the norm and with sextal this is an opportunity aspect but like sierra said you have to turn your head to shake the hand and to see that you're working with somebody and that it can work well and so people who have the sun sextal moon can take things for granted um, and just be blind to blind to maybe some more challenges or difficulties that that weren't part of their upbringing that is, I really agree with that. I think that in the same way that we'll see it in, or more like the opposite way that we'll see it in a more challenging aspect, that when there is this auspicious aspect and that is the norm for the person, then realizing that there are more difficult aspects and difficult ways. Like if your inner and outer self are so used to functioning in this nice symbiotic way, like you expressed, then without having you know, information being presented to you, opportunities to learn different perspectives, then Mm -hmm. you're just used to those two energies working really well. And then it could be blind to some of the other, I guess, possibilities of which, you know, people have experienced between their sun and moon relationships. Yeah, like without challenge, without having been, without your security having been challenged, there's a a a bit of a difficulty um, understanding internal challenges within others. And if that's happening in your relationship, there just needs to be a little bit of that communication, making sure there's full transparency. Mm, Yeah. And when it comes to transits for a sun moon sextile, I feel like that's one that I just don't really look at. Yeah. I think we, I think we as like in any of these aspect episodes are going to be like, I don't really pay attention to sextiles too much. It (laughs) is of, of the major aspects. It's the most minor, I would say. Yeah. Because it is more subtle and there are so many more like in your face opportunities with trines. Yeah. I, I feel like I would pay attention if the sun was sextile to my moon because yes. it stays there longer. The sun is slower moving than the a moon. A full day as opposed to like four hours. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I think that that's something that I would pay attention to more. But in general, I would pay more attention to that conjunction like we talked about. And then, yeah, we'll get into the trines and oppositions. I'd pay more attention to those. Mm-hmm. For sure. So Any more notes on, on the sextile? Or are we, we good to move on? I I really, I got some like personal insights on, you know, you sharing your thoughts on that because I do have this aspect and it's not one that I pay super attention to because it's out of sign. And I've, mm. it's just been really illuminating with these luminaries, you know, thinking about that <laughs> because I do, I do feel so much of what you said. And it's very cool to have, you know, outside I guess new information. I'm I'm just an information seeker, but I like the, you know, when you think about like quote unquote difficult aspects with people within yourself, but when you have people that come into your life and bring those more friction aspects, it's actually even if it could feel harder, I think it could be so beneficial to somebody like me who has that sun moon sextile and has that really grounded and secure feeling. I, I, I'm very grateful for the challenge because you and I technically have, what is it, sun or moon square moon? Is that what we have technically? We have, no, our moons love each other. Our moon and suns are like your cap sun and my, or cap moon and my Aries sun okay. are square each other. Yeah. Ooh, and there's, we'll get to talk about it next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I just I think that that's a really good point to bring up with when we talk about the quote unquote more positive aspects. I feel like I'm saying quote unquote all day long today. I'm sorry. I feel like those. <laughs> Who are you quoting? <laughs> quoting yourself. 
<laughs> I just like Quoting I don't want society. it to be like this is a positive aspect or this is a negative aspect. Like you know, in general, when we refer to it as that, I think the more challenging aspects can actually, um, you know, illuminate those easier aspects, and easier aspects can, I guess, soften some of those. Or maybe um, bring some, of course, classic Sag here, but bring some optimism to those more challenging aspects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about us now because... <laughs> <laughs> Have we stopped talking about ourselves? I don't know. <laughs> Sun, moon, square. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love... Well, I mean, I... <laughs> was such an astrologer thing, but like, I love seeing this in a chart, but I also am like... I know that it's not a great placement in a chart. Like when someone knows they have a sun moon square, you know, it is challenging, just like you said, a challenging placement here. But I think that when we see challenging placements in a chart, I'm attracted to these people because it means that they've overcome something or that there's an internal conversation that's happening within somebody. Um, mm. This is when a sun and moon are within or are 90 degrees apart from each other. So generally speaking, they're always going to be in the same modality, in the same mode. So mutable is going to square mutable, fixed is going to square fixed, same for cardinal, unless, of course, there's the out of sign option too. Um, But I think of this as, um, first off, when we see this in the sky, this is called this quarter moon, which is basically when the moon looks like half of the moon kind of confusing moon math it's partly moony as one of our patrons oh my god (laughs) hashtag moon math oh god i want that on a shirt or a beanie okay moon math moon math so i really like this placement because it it shows some dynamism it shows some charge some like power some willingness to overcome challenges and struggles like you think of even signs that are in a square to each other gemini and pisces where pisces is so connected to the emotion of everything it is very much a flowy sign gemini still has that flowiness because it's also mutable but it's much more connected to reason and logic and thought and concept so when these two are married to each other they're bound to each other there's a need to find a common ground there And sometimes it takes a little extra work to make sure that both of those sides of yourself, both your creative, self-expressive sense of willpower and your emotional needs and desire to be nurtured are being taken care of. So there's like a very specific solution to be found for these people. They're good problem solvers because they're forced to problem solve. Yes, yes. There is this like inner tension that just exists because a square by nature is a, you know, attention aspect. We are feeling that corner of the square, that 90 degrees. And, you know, it is going to, like you said, unless it's out of sign, it's going to be within that same mode. And when I think about just a quarter moon, like my, literally, I remember doing this with my fourth graders because we did a whole like demonstration of the different moon phases and everything. But if you think about like a, just like a clock face, and if you've got 12 o'clock as this new moon where, you know, the sun and moon are conjunct directly opposite that at six o'clock would be that full moon that's when we are in the sun and the moon which we'll get to in a moment but that's that full moon and then the three and nine o'clock those are the quarter moons because if you think Mm -hmm. about there's four different elements and we're going by mode here and so we if we have the same one on top of one another that's that new moon and now we've moved either to three o'clock or to nine o'clock that's that quarter moon we've made that hard kind of square line but it's also like just a really just I'm such a visual person I'm such a a face clock person I love to have a face clock I'm not a digital clock person I feel like there's such a there's something very pleasant about that shape too because we're very aware that they are I don't know like you said they're relating to one another but we've got space between the two of them we're not halfway Mm -hmm. there you know we've got a decent amount of space in their own domains they've got just enough space where they really are ruling themselves but they have to find a common ground with one another yeah and just i don't know that quarter moon energy that that sun square moon when you have that it's it's forcing you to have these two you know 
these two signs that don't communicate in the same way find the commonality of their mode in order to get shit done (laughs) you know in order to communicate and I really like the way that you brought it up about you love that type of person because you know that they're used to overcoming that energy on a daily basis Mm -hmm. and I definitely feel like it builds such resilience and can push you to success because you're you're always used to functioning under pressure. So what's a little more? You know, this is mm-hmm. how I function on on the daily. And so when something is hard and difficult, hey, I'm used to overcoming that in the existence of me. And I've built such this, you know, resilience and strength because my outer self is this way, my inner self is this way, and they've got to find a commonality in order for me to be good with me. Yeah, exactly. In order for me to be good with me, there's such an internal struggle here. And for someone who has this placement, you know, that internal struggle, and maybe you're still working through it. But that's the goal is just to find that commonality. Yeah. And it's interesting too thinking about the quarter moons, because there are two, there's one leading up to the full moon and one leading up to the new moon. So there's almost this, either you're in the quarter moon phase, which is we're really in a place of manifestation. There's a lot of activity, a lot of fire, a lot of passion, a lot of movement forward. And then if you're moving more towards the new moon, if you're in the quarter moon between the full and new moon, then you're more focusing on releasing the past and emotional release and letting go. Exactly. Yes, because they're both dealing with that, you know, square energy, but one of them's moving towards completion and one of them's moving towards blank slate. Mm. And then, yeah, in a relationship, I mean, that's us. I kind of like that because we do push each other and there, you know, there is friction when one of us doesn't want to be pushed, you know, like you have to be in the right mood. We both have to be in the right mood to accept that we're we're here to push each other because it's Aries and Capricorn too. We like future process, like progress. We like to move forward. We like to be efficient. And so when we're both in that efficiency mode, it's great because we push each other in different ways. But when we're not in that same efficiency mode, there is that friction. There is that tension. We have to be like, all right, to your corners. (laughs) <laughs> to your corners. No, but it's it's so true because for the example of Aries and Capricorn, they are cardinal signs. And mm. a and having that opposite, opposite of Aries would be Libra, but halfway between is either Capricorn or Cancer. And so that's what's causing those square shape. We still have that mode of cardinal, but both Aries and Capricorn, as opposed to, you know, Aries and Libra, one being more okay with letting the other person take the lead, the other one yeah, being the one who wants to air. take the lead. Yeah. They work and this together is, still. We've got fire and earth here. And so whenever you have a square, you're dealing with an element that is not, you know, technically complementary to that element. They just don't, they just don't speak the same language. And Mm. you can want the same thing as somebody, but if you don't speak the same language, there's frustration. And so Mm -hmm. in a square, there's always in order to best find that common ground, it's like both, both people, both, you know, the sun and the moon here have to be willing to learn some of the other person's vocabulary. And Mm -hmm. because we could want the same thing, but the way in which it's expressed by the sun the way in which it's expressed by the moon is not speaking the same language and so that's Mm -hmm. where that tension builds but as someone who has put in so much time and effort into learning another language it's frustrating as fuck to do that and then it's so (laughs) rewarding you know because you put in you have a conversation exactly and so that is what this this square is bringing it's bringing frustration pushing you beyond your normal limits and getting you out of that comfort zone but it's bringing so much that like you know oh gosh my capricorn's getting lit up i'm like when you conquer a challenge and you <laughs> succeeded in yeah. <laughs> i like how you, you became know? like a great grandma <laughs> when, you conquer. when you conquer when you conquer it <laughs> Kind of also became your cat in that voice. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Great grandma. Yeah, I don't know where song. that came from because he's a Pisces. Anyways. I yeah. Guess, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so, I mean, yeah, Sun, Sun, Moon, Square, we see you, we see that you have overcome challenges. And we see that that's a constant with you, too. It's not something that you just like you conquer, and then it's done. It's like, this is a very good expression of how healing or growth is nonlinear, how you have to continue to learn and peel away at the, the layers of growth that your sun and moon are teaching you. Yeah. And for the transits here, this is another one that if I notice it, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But I'm also yeah. not looking for it. It personally. gets to a point when you're comfortable with astrology that you're like, oh, okay, the moon is in a cardinal sign. That means it's square my sun. You don't have to look into it so much. You're just like, oh, okay, so it's square. It's going to be because the moon is so fast moving. It's like, okay, it's going to last me a couple days. Maybe I'll be a little frustrated today. But it gets to the point where you could just be like, oh, it's in this mode or, oh, it's in this element. That means it's going to be square or trine or sextile. And you can get a little bit more comfortable with the vocabulary. Yeah, exactly. And once you are, you also get the feeling because we are, I mean, all of these are involving the moon and the moon mm -hmm. moves fast. Moon moves. Moon math. Yeah. Moon moves moon fast. Math. But with the square <laughs> being in a, or sorry, with the sun being in a square to your moon, I guess I don't, I, yeah, I will say that I've, I've paid attention to it because in this past cap or Aquarius season, I definitely noticed all of the squares to my moon. Granted, like literally Pluto and everything was in Aquarius, but I definitely noticed the square to my moon. Yeah. I was just thinking, wait, is this me right now? But no, as we're recording this, it's the first day of Pisces season and the sun is exactly square my sun, but that's different. Mm, that's a different right. episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I, and again, like, and I love the Taurus Aquarius square, not in my personal relationships, but like when I'm experiencing it for myself, I really appreciate, I have appreciated all of the Aquarius squaring me and challenging me out of the norm because Taurus is so attached to how things mm -hmm. have been done because there's a sense of reliability and dependability. Whereas Aquarius is very much like progress for the sake of progress. And they both struggle in speaking the other one's language but they can both really benefit from each other's language because Aquarius Absolutely. can learn the benefits of um, convention and tradition and Taurus can benefit from being forced to move out of a stagnant place yeah so again it's that you know this is not how I normally do things but in that tension and challenge to do something in a different way I am growing like monumentally. Yeah. Get in the zone, the comfort zone. Sponsor us, AutoZone. <laughs> Isn't it get out of the zone? Out of the Yeah, it should zone? be get out of the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. Well, uh. in complete, I feel like, contrast to a sun moon square, mm -hmm. moving into a sun moon trine, this is like ding, ding, ding. Oh my gosh, glorious. You've got a sun moon trine. Those yes. energies are flowing and lovely. And yeah, so trine energy is when you see somebody who has sun trine moon, I feel like it's like, oh my gosh, this is exciting to talk about because this is such a happy placement. And as opposed to having to turn your head and shake hands in the sextal, a trine is like, we are like looking at each other all like immediately like we're just already seeing each other and we yeah. don't have to do anything to just communicate there's a strong knowledge that that presence is always there and so this again similar to sextal there's a secure attachment style for the most part um and very balanced emotional state because they communicate well with each other and because without having to turn their head to acknowledge one another they could just look look in the direction and nod at each other and be like, okay, you there? Yep, I'm here. Great. Move on. So there's sort of that yeah. that lesser need to check in. It's less effort, you know? We talked about yes. that tension that we have with the square. That is a lot mm -hmm. of energy and effort needed to be exerted to, you know, overcome those that that energy. And this is an easy flow of energy. And unless it is out of sign... In a trine, it just means that sun and moon is in the same element, essentially. So mm -hmm. if you think about, you know, if you have your sun is in Aquarius and your moon is in Libra, they are both air signs that is sun, trine, moon, or your sun's in Aquarius, your moon is in Gemini, sun, trine, moon, and all, any of those options. And then same with the three earth signs, fire, water. Yes. So you normally, it can be out of sign, 
But normally when, you know, we're just thinking of that kind of like, oh, the sun is trying my moon today because it's within that sign and it's the same, sorry, it's within that element. And so we're just, we are so speaking the same language. We are so yeah. speaking the same language because we're speaking the same element. We're made up and, of the same stuff. And whereas the moon sun conjunction is we're very tapped into our emotions and emotions are a big part of why we do the things we do with the trine. It's not quite the same. There's, there's just an acknowledgement that yes, I have emotions, but they're not a major part of who I am all of the time. It can help dictate maybe some of my actions and some of my desire to express myself, but I don't feel the need to make everything I do about who my core self is. These people are super easygoing and can tend to be very like accepting personalities. I mean, I think about both Mitch, my partner, and well, Mitch is my partner, and my mom have, you know, same element, sun and moon. And they're both very easygoing people. They both very much are, they accept what is current and if they don't yeah. they've learned how to accept what is the current moment what is the present moment yeah there is like there's such with trine energy it's not something that you are always aware of because it's so easy flowing it's just always happening that a lot of people tend to notice your trines before you notice your trines because mm -hmm. it's so obviously happening that you're not even aware of it anymore or at all. And then someone's like, yeah, you're really, you know, good at being your inner self and outer self and accepting of both emotions and like, you know, external needs. And it's like, oh, wow, am I? Yeah, I guess so. That's just, that's just how I am. That That's kind yeah. of like that energy flow. Because if you think about a sextile, it is either that air and fire or that earth and water. And air and fire speak the same language. Earth and water speak the same language. But we're talking about the same element here. So it's not even speaking the same language. It's being made of the same stuff and speaking the mm. same language. And so, you know, there is... it. Like nobody is, everybody is the native speaker here. You know, there's no, uh, there's no accent. There's no like mixed yes. up vocabulary. It's just the same. And so it's a, obviously there's a little bit different. A Gemini is different from an Aquarius is different from a Libra, but they're all speaking the language of air, you know, and yeah. that just is, there's no need to wait. Can you repeat that word? It's just, it's just easy. Hmm. Yeah, and I like what you said about other people seeing your trines before you do, because it's similar to Sextile in that there's sort of a, a taking advantage of your luck in this arena as well. And yeah, like in having an ease to the way that you communicate your emotion or not communicate, that's more mercury, but in the way that you express your emotions or in the way that you feel your drive and motivation there's just that ease there where for you again you might take for granted that that is special that that's a positive and not yeah. like uh what is the word i'm trying to think of not like hmm, a default I don't know. yeah maybe not the norm yeah yeah something like yeah. that yeah yeah i think that you know, because the sun is that external energy and the moon is that internal and more emotional side of things, if your external self is living life in a way that just beautifully communicates with your internal self, there's obviously going to be, you know, little to no conflict there. And you're mm -hmm. like, and same thing with your inner emotional world reflecting in your outer life. Whereas that is not the case in square, like we, you know, explained, it's com two completely different energies and finding that middle place to come together this is you know it's it's supporting one another with ease yeah yeah this feels very balanced where conjunction is super like charged yeah, yeah very concentrated and you know they're speaking the exact same dialect of the language this is you know, we have a little bit of different vocabulary. We'll understand each other when we use the vocabulary, but there is just a less concentrated energy when it comes to the sun moon trine. And, and they might not look like they visibly have a lot of drive and movement and forward charge, but that doesn't mean that they're not productive. It's just because mm. things come a little bit easier. And I only mean this in themes of sun and moon, because if you have a sun moon trine and you're like, this doesn't sound like me. I bet you have some squares in there too. Like, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> Not everything's yeah. perfect, right? <laughs> but um, but 
there is just when it comes to the sun moon themes there's a little bit less of a visible need to move forward and finding productivity in a more relaxed and easygoing setting exactly yeah and as far as this transit well actually before we get into that if we talk about relationships if Mm. you have sun trine moon which Mm -hmm. wait do i have that with anybody do i know any aries moons yes do i know any taurus suns (laughs) do i (laughs) yeah i mean like if we think about sun trine moon I definitely have people in my life with other, you know, with as a fire sun, I have fire moons in my life. And as an earth moon, I've got a lot of earth suns in my life too. And that energy feels, it feels really nice. It just feels really nice because it's, it feels like an effortlessness. And because it is a sun to moon, there is that illumination and there is that depth and it's just flowing really nicely with one another. And I just feel like there's an easy connection. If you find out that you and a person in your life have sun, trine, moon, it does feel like there's just an understanding between Mm. you, whether it's you expressing your emotions or the the way you are expressing your, you know, main character energy that feels like there's just that ease there and instant understanding. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And understanding with one another. I feel like these are the people who, when they come to me at markets, we just get along and then we move on. We take it for granted that we just got along, we understood each other, and then we'll never see each other again. Whereas a square, you know, if I see these people at markets like, wait, you challenge me. Like, wait, let's see where this goes. Let's see what we learn from each other kind of thing. Whereas with trine, if I meet a Capricorn or Virgo sun or a Sag or Leo moon, because those are both going to be trine my Aries sun and Taurus moon. Sorry if that was too fast. Um, we're, they're just going to be a nice ease and in, in conversation and friendliness and an understanding, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So um, transit wise, when it comes to this, I feel like I'm saying this every time, like, do I pay attention to this? I don't know. Um, I, I think that I think because it happens so quickly, we pay attention to the new and full moon so much. And those happen every two weeks, you know? So when it comes to like the moon trining or sex dialing my son, I'm not paying attention to it super actively. There's so much to pay attention to in astrology. But if you are, this is just, again, like a time where there's an ease to expressing emotions. There's an ease to what drives you and what makes you feel like yourself, like a unique version of you that puts the spotlight on either your emotions. If the sun is in a trine to your moon, or if the moon is in a trine to your sun, nurturing and, and helping that need to self-express, giving it a little bit of space. Yeah. I think that I mean, I'm going to look at this retroactively. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. that major event that I decided to look up the astrology for, sun, trine, moon. Makes sense. It's more of like, oh, that makes sense as opposed to something that I'm looking to happen. For, yeah. Yeah. So, And then lastly, we've got the opposition, which is the full moon. So when a sun and moon are directly opposite each other, it's when we see the, it is fully moony, uh, according to the weather. You so there's the a whole of the moon. The whole Ooh. of the moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those who know it, know it. Okay, moving on. Yes. Yeah, I have zero idea, but I appreciated the serenade. <laughs> So the sun and moon are exactly opposite each other. Um, This where the conjunction is very Aries energy. They're like very concentrated and intense. This is very Libra energy. There's such a push and pull between the story arc of your life and what you need to feel emotionally secure. So this is a really dynamic placement. I wouldn't say it's super challenging, but I also wouldn't say that it's super easygoing like a trine. I agree. I think that opposition energy is very much, we are so similar that sometimes it's frustrating and we have to find a way to get this done 
in where we have to find, I think of it as tug of war, where we have to find Mm -hmm. that happy balance where we're both pulling equally that we can kind of rest as opposed to one of us getting tugged by the other, the other one getting tugged by the other. And Mm -hmm. I've really found in, I I don't know, something about full moon people in my life. I know a good amount of full moon people, which is wild. And I feel like there's always a little bit. They put themselves out there. They do put themselves out there. And I feel like there's some sort of a little bit buzzy energy to them. Mm-hmm. I think there's something because there is that if you think of the literally tug of war back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, I feel like there's some sort of buzzy energy with full moon babies where, you know, your your external self and your internal self are constantly pushing and pulling that I'm getting a vibration from you. And I think yes. that some of the challenges that it can be is that this is who I am. Oh, wait, but I'm actually exactly the opposite of that too. And there's the idea of two, not even just two truths existing, but two opposite things existing. You know, if you mm-hmm. think about like the Such Leo polarity. Aquarius axis, Leo wants to be in the spotlight and the Aquarius does not care about being in the spotlight. And if you are a full moon baby with Leo Aquarius, both of those things are true for you. It just depends on the, you know, the area of your life in which you are seeking spotlight versus which you are seeking, you know, the behind the scenes energy, but they are both true. And so I feel like some of that buzziness comes from the, you know, wait, but both of these opposite things are true for me. And I need to find a way where we can both equally tug. So we're, you know, at peace as opposed to constantly going back and forth. And that's going to be true for any sign with that, you know, full moon energy. Yeah. I mean, I think of these people as instead of having it, having like very set structured emotional habits, this is someone who will spend days or a week at a time putting all their energy out there, living out their sense of purpose with the sun energy. And then they'll take an entire week or like five days to just like nurture that moon because they realize, whoa, I haven't been taking care of my emotional needs. And really having that, those swings of the pendulum, like really extreme energy habits because you're I mean you're right like if you have your Capricorn sun say that your sun is in Capricorn you are here on this earth in this lifetime to achieve something big to gain wisdom and to feel productive and efficient and and like a boss but emotionally what you need is to be hugged and to be taken care of and it doesn't exactly like work to push the Capricorn sun further on its goal, but that's what you need. So there needs to be a constant conversation with yourself of, okay, I'm living this purpose, but am I also making sure that my heart, my soft spot is being being taken care of as well? Yeah, it is full moon uh, natal energy is just so fascinating to me. And Mm. I feel like, you know, I, cause I also, I have uh, a cousin who has the is a Pisces sun Virgo moon. And there's Mm -hmm. that creative, like we don't have to make sense to this Pisces. And then that Virgo, I need the tangible detailed, you know, list of this. And Pisces is something, you know, like we can go from A to Z and then back to M somewhere. And Virgo is A, B, C, D, you know? So there is this need for both of them to be happening. And your sun and your moon, like we keep talking about in all of these are just two major, major parts of what we connect to astrologically as our us as a, as you know a person and with that fighting back I don't want to it doesn't have to be fighting back and forth just in the nature of the pulling just back a push and, and forth, pull yeah yeah there has to I really liked how you put it of the you know putting yourself really out there and then really nurturing yourself afterwards because and and maybe you know part of depending of course on Kinda all the other all aspects yeah, like maybe part of that, you know, journey is figuring out a, a less dramatic pendulum swing. Maybe it's two days here, two mm-hmm. days there, as opposed to a week and a week. And, yeah. you know, maybe that is the journey, but also maybe depending on signs, like you said, what that Capricorn and Cancer, maybe until the project's done, we're in the Capricorn energy. And then once the project's done, we really need to retreat and nurture that Cancer energy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the same with all of the other axis, you know, going on. But I also, something that I find really interesting about just 
in the same way that we talked about new moon energy, how that it can be a person, that could be a transit, that also it tends to be something that we really look to every month. We have that full moon. That is like when we get into the transits of this aspect, we not only are going to talk about the full moon in the sky, meaning the sun and the moon are opposite presently, but we will also once a month experience that little personal full moon full where moon. we have sun opposite moon. And that is one that I definitely do pay attention to. Yeah, absolutely. When it's opposing your sun or your moon. Yeah, I mean, think about how in a full moon, there's so much energy, like we all just feel a little bit more like that buzzing energy. Like I think about ER doctors saying like, oh, the ER is always so crazy during a full moon. Like there's just, crazy. you know, we are out. There's just everyone is out to play or not to play, but we're just all out. And when you have that in your natal chart, that's that buzz that Sierra was talking about. I also wanted to bring this back to the upbringing. I didn't even mention it with the sun moon square that obviously would show like friction in your upbringing, friction in different views or difficulty coming together with your parents' beliefs or views. And with an opposition, is sun moon opposition, if you have your, you were born during the full moon, your upbringing is very, very different. It's opposing what you're meant to be doing in this life. So there's just sort of this difficulty in connecting how you were raised and your personal makeup to how you're supposed to express yourself and be yourself and, and live the story arc of your life. So again, there's that Libra energy of your parents having very opposing views or different ways of doing things than you're meant to be doing things in this life. I also think that people born during the full moon are people who will surprise you because when you meet someone and you get to know them, you get to know their son, they're this one thing. And then when they let you into the moon and there's something completely opposite to it, there's that surprise element. And so being in yes. a relationship, whether it's platonic or professional or romantic with someone who has a full moon in their chart, there's that element too of, okay, which side of you should I be communicating with right now? Yeah. You know, it's really cool to think about in like, I love the idea of surprising because you're right. It's, I think of you as this one extreme and actually mm -hmm. you also exist as this other extreme and thinking about that within relationships. I have a friend, so I'm a Sagittarius sun and a Capricorn moon. And I have a friend who is a cancer sun, Gemini moon. So she, oh, her son is wow. opposite my moon and my son is opposite her moon and also thinking that that's that's my goddaughter too we have that relationship <laughs> which is just really you know it's it's such an understand I mean this is a special situation because it's both sun and moon opposite sun and moon so I feel yeah. like there's a really well-balanced understanding but you know in general if you you know as a Capricorn moon that would be somebody who would be a Cancer son for me. And there is, if you think of Sagittarius versus Cancer, not a lot of commonality there. But then if you think of that Sun and Moon, Cancer, Capricorn, that's why I think that this is a great example. I mean, we can find a million more, but I think that when people first look into astrology and are just paying attention to the Sun sign and they're like, I don't normally get along with Cancers. That's weird that I get mm. along with you or whatever that is because you think about, you know, just your suns. But then maybe there is that Moon connection that you have. It could be that trine. It could be whatever aspect it is. But I think it's really cool when you have somebody in your life whose sun is opposite your moon or whose moon is opposite your sun because mm -hmm. there is this understanding of one another in a different way than a sextile, in a different way than a trine because we have sun versus moon, not the same way of functioning, but very complementary. And we have opposite signs, not the same way of functioning, but you know, very similar. And there is just this, I think... It's a really almost like a what back to like the tug of war. It's almost like a beautiful way of strengthening your muscles. You know, when you have that push and pull back and forth with someone mm. where you have a nice understanding and it can be a good conversation while you're working those muscles. It doesn't have to be through tension, but there definitely is a building of understanding that way. Yeah, it's really interesting because you made me think of, OK, and if anybody else wants to be walked through that process basically what is your sun and then the opposite sign will be 
the person's moon. So I have an Aries sun. So anybody with a Libra moon, I have this sun moon opposition. And then same with my moon Taurus, the opposite of that is Scorpio. So anyone who has a Scorpio sun and is going to be in that full moon opposition vibe to my moon. And actually my sister is both a Scorpio I was just sun about and to say, a Libra wait. moon. I know <laughs> yeah. it's so fascinating. And we do really have very different perspectives. We come from very different sides of the spectrum. And there is that push and pull. And I think similarly to what you said about like, relationships and being compatible. I mean, you just have to be willing to acknowledge you're coming from a different place. And there needs to be an openness in the relationship. There needs to be an openness to somebody having a completely different experience of the world than you or experience of their life's journey and experience of their inner world and inner self. As long as you can come to a place of understanding that you don't know what their experience looks and feels like, then there can be a compatibility and there can be an openness to the challenge and openness to the growth within that relationship. Yeah. And that as like in a natal chart, you have to, you know, bring that openness to yourself and yeah. it kind of yeah, not be so hard on yourself for needing two opposite things. Yes. And just, you know, taking the time to learn that, in this category of my life, I need to lean into the Virgo energy. And in this category of my life, I need to lean into the Pisces energy. And yeah. they balance out one another when we have that equal tug. And it's okay to have two opposite truths be, you know, the exist within, yeah. within my, you know, external energy and my internal nurturing self. So for you with a transit, do you pay attention to uh, cancer season when it's in opposition to your natal Capricorn moon? And then same for Gemini moon being opposite your Sag sun? You know, I feel like I pay so much attention to the moon that I would pay attention to when the moon is opposite my moon, when the moon mm -hmm. is, yeah, maybe opposite my sun. Because I've just I'm I'm constantly aware of what sign the moon is, and that's just yeah. how I live. We both have the like widget on our like uh, lock screen. Get yourself the thing. deluxe moon app, and then make it a widget. And then whenever you look at your lock screen, you see exactly what sign the moon is in and what phase it's in. Deluxe moon, you better sponsor us. Come on now, please do. Oh my gosh, it is great. <laughs> but that's what I'm I'm so aware of that. I would say that I am more. I pay more attention. Oh, man, I was going to say in Gemini season, but I don't know if that's the case. I think I I think I do pay attention in both Gemini and Cancer season because I know that is activating my Sagittarius and Capricorn placements, but mm -hmm. I'd like to pay more attention to it. I think, you know, I think that in general with full moons, I pay attention to the full moon more so than yes, exactly. the personal one that I'm getting to experience, you know, but I love the idea of doing that. And when there is a full moon on an axis that is very present in your chart, like when I have a full moon in Scorpio, I know that that moon is opposing my natal moon in Taurus and the sun is forming a conjunction to my natal moon in Taurus. So you're getting this really strong energy. So that's when I mostly pay attention to, you know, yeah. full moon vibes in my natal chart is when there is an actual full moon or new moon, you know, twice a year, you're going to get a new and full moon or four times a year, you'll get new and full moons that are activating your sun and moon axis. Exactly. Yeah, I, I pay attention to the one that's happening. Like if it is the full moon in Capricorn, I know that as a Capricorn moon, I'm, I'm paying attention to that. But I yeah. like the idea of paying attention to the Cancer moon. Sorry, I like the idea of paying attention to <laughs> it really is moon sun. math. <laughs> like yeah oh like my having gosh. to figure out <laughs> yeah paying attention to when the sun is opposite my moon and mm -hmm. yeah that is really interesting to to dive into more yeah Ooh. so there you have it those are the five major aspects dealing with the luminaries and how they relate to each other in those different different aspects yeah i you know 
I would love to hear from anybody. Definitely reach out to us on Instagram and feel free to check out our community over on Patreon because I feel like this is going to be a really big discussion when mm-hmm. we when this episode comes out because the sun and the moon are just such key parts of who we are. And yeah. they're some of the first things we learn about ourselves in astrology. And I'd love to hear from people who have, you know, these these different aspects that we mentioned. And also a reminder for those who are a little more comfortable with the, you know, getting into the depths of astrology, remember that you can look out of sign based on Mm -hmm. the different degrees that's going on. And again, go back and listen to that aspects episode that we have, because that'll just give you more details on all the different degrees. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, Mimi, why did we talk about the sun and moon aspects today? Because the stars made us do it. (laughs) 